In this video, we're continuing on with the special right triangles worksheet on the CUDA software website under the geometry tab. I'll leave a link in the description below so you know how to access this. Now, in the previous video, numbers one through six, we dealt with 45, 45, 90 triangles. Now, we're going to deal with 30, 60, 90 triangles. So we have our 90 degree angle here and our 30 degree angle here. Now, the ratio of these sides are going to be as follows. The hypotenuse represents two. The side directly across from 60 degrees is the square root of three, and the side opposite 30 degrees is one. Remember, the larger the angle, the longer the side. Across from 30, one. Across from 60, that side, square root of three, and across from 90, two. Knowing this, we'll be able to set up proportions and then use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the side that is left. Or another way, remember across from 90 is two, across from 30 is one, and across from 60 is the square root of three. Now we can multiply a variable to each of these ratios without changing the value of those ratios. For the square root of three, we'll multiply that by z, we'll multiply one by z, and we'll multiply two by z. Now we're given that 2z is equal to 16. So we'll solve by dividing by two. So z is going to be equal to eight. So knowing that z is eight, we can plug the value of eight in for z in order to solve for x and y. So since x equals the square root of three times z, x is going to equal the square root of three times eight. So x is eight square root of three. And for y, y is equal to one times z, so y is equal to one times eight, so y is eight. So our sides for this 30, 60, 90 are eight square root of three for x, and y is eight. Let's set this up again in number eight. Across from 30 is one, so we'll say one x this time. Across from 90 is two, so two x, and across from 60 is going to be the square root of three times x. So u equals two x, and side length of v equals the square root of three times x. And we have that one x is equal to two. So dividing by one, we'll get that x is equivalent to two. So now we'll take that value of two and plug it in for x. So u is now two times two, so u is equal to four, and v is now the square root of three times two, which cannot be simplified any further, so two square root of three. Now we have the lengths of our missing sides. u is four, and v is two times the square root of three. And number nine, across from 90 represents two x, so two x is equivalent to u. Across from 60 is the square root of three times x. So the square root of three times x is v, and across from 30 is one. So x, or one x, is equal to eight. So if eight is x, I'll plug x in to the equation for u. If u is equal to two x, then u is equal to two times eight, so u is equal to 16. And if v equals the square root of three, times x, then v is equal to eight times the square root of three. So in number nine, our missing side lengths are u and v. u is 16 and v is eight times the square root of three. In number 10, setting up our proportions again, across from 90 is two, x and y are already taken, so let's call this two z. Across from 60 is the square root of three, times z, and across from 30 is one z. So we have that x is equal to the square root of three times z, and we have that y is equal to one z, which is z. So we're solving for x and y, given that eight times the square root of five is equal to two times z. So what we're doing is dividing by two to isolate that z. So z is equal to eight divided by two, which is four times the square root of five. So now we're going to plug four square root of five in for z. 
So x is going to equal the square root of 3 times 4 times the square root of 5, and y is going to be equal to 4 times the square root of 5. Solving for x, x is equal to the square root of 3 times 4 times the square root of 5, which is 4 times the square root of 3 times 5. So that's going to be x equal to 4 times the square root of 15. And there's no perfect square that fits into 15. So x equals 4 times the square root of 15, and y is equal to 4 times the square root of 5. In number 11, setting up our ratios across from 90, we'll have 2z, so 2z is equal to x. Across from 60 is the square root of 3 times z, and across from 30 is simply z, which is the same as 1z. So if x is equal to 2 times z, and y is equal to z, I'll solve for z and then plug that in. If 5 times the square root of 3 equals the square root of 3 times z, I'll divide by the square root of 3. My square root of 3 will cancel out, and I'll get that 5 is equal to z. So x is equal to 2 times 5, and y is equal to 5. So x is 10, since 2 times 5 is 10, and y is 5. Our missing side lengths are 5 and 10. And lastly, number 12. Across from 90 is 2z. So solving for z at the start, dividing both sides by 2, z is going to be equal to 5. Across from 60, we have the square root of 3 times z. And across from 30, we'll have z. So x equals the square root of 3 times z, and y equals z. And we already solved for z, so let's plug that in. x is equal to 5 times the square root of 3, and y is equal to 5. So 5 times the square root of 3 is our value for x, and 5 is our value for y. Now the way I did numbers 7 through 12 could also be applied in numbers 1 through 6. You would just have to switch up the ratio and do 1, 1, and square root of 2. So x, x, and the square root of 2, x.